right now. <laughs> Hi everyone. My name is Phoenix Love Armenta, also known as Woke Witch, and I'm here with Council Member Nikki from Tunada Bass. Uh, hi. Hi. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. I'm excited to walk the lake. Yeah. So, we first, should we, do you prefer me calling you Council Member Bass or Nikki or what? What should we? How should we refer to you? Oh, you can call me Nikki today. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> so Nikki has been brave enough to agree to do this live streaming today. We're gonna do a little walk around the lake and look at some of the plants and talk about politics and things that are going on. Plants and politics. Plants Exciting. And politics. Woo! Perfect. So, do you think we can maybe start walking? And sure. Go? And um, I just wanted to start out talking. Oh, actually, let's introduce people who are here. Also, folks in the back. Good morning. I'm Tiffany Kang. I work for Councilmember Bass doing communications and community liaison work. Hi, I'm Mary Rose. I'm with the East Lake United for Justice Group, and I love plants. <laughs> Hi, I'm Asia Hampton. I work with Hope Collaborative in downtown Oakland. We do some justice work. Um, so the reason why I wanted to do this is one, uh, uh, your predecessor, Abel Guillen, I used to have a walk around the lake with him every month. Uh, and we would just get caught up on, with, with each other, we're friends, but also get caught up on what's going on with the city. Mm -hmm. He'd tell me, you know, what are some things that I should be paying attention to. I'd tell him some things that I was concerned about that I wanted him to, to know about. Mm -hmm. And that's how I kept up on politics. And, you know, a lot of times people think, well, maybe I have some sort of special relationship and then that's why I did it. But really, it's something that anybody can do. That's like, right. Every, every resident has a right to your time, right? That's right. Yes, we're, pub we're public servants, that's right. exactly right. But you also have a limited amount of time, right? That's right as well. <laughs> yes. So that's why I thought I asked you to do this and I, I thought, you know, since we didn't have a personal relationship, I could bring out some District 2 residents and we could do a live show and make sure that the public had access to this as well. Right. Um, so I just wanted to ask you, how's your first year going? The first year was fantastic. I mean, obviously it was a big learning curve. We worked on our two-year budget. I worked on passing my first set of policies. Um, got to know so many more neighbors mm -hmm. and neighborhoods. Um, so I feel really great about it. Um, some of the things that we were able to do include um, working on some of my longer-term goals around making housing uh, community owned mm -hmm. so we were able to create a fund in the Oakland budget that's 12 million dollars for permanent affordability that allows tenants to purchase their homes with land trust co-ops and affordable housing developers. Awesome. So wait, what does the 12 million dollars go to? Like what does it pay for specifically? So um, the 12 million dollars was set aside through uh, the Measure KK infrastructure and housing bond that voters passed a few years ago and it's um, uh, it's uh, sort of a notice of funding availability that the city puts out along with other funding opportunities. So in March, uh, council will get the first round of allocations uh, that are recommended by the staff. Mm -hmm. So we're expecting to see um, the, la the land trusts in the area, some co-ops hopefully, um, some affordable housing developers partnering with tenants mm -hmm. to actually purchase their homes okay. so they're no longer tenants but they're actually homeowners. That's amazing. Um, and some of these projects are actually going to be community owned through land trusts. Awesome. So the idea, um, even before Moms for Housing made this um, really popular, is mm -hmm. to take housing off the speculative market uh -huh. and make it community owned. That's awesome. And permanently affordable. So. That's one of the things I was happy to accomplish and something I'll keep building on in yeah. my term. Well, I want to. I have a plant here that I want to talk about, but I want to talk about the Moms for Housing because you played a really big role in that and mm -hmm. are continuing to play a role in that, right? Right. Yeah. So can you tell me, like, how did you get introduced to the Moms for Housing issue? Sure. So, um, you know, Moms for Housing, they did um, a week of actions around housing back in November. So I met them during the week of actions. Um, and then as um, things started to get a little bit more complicated, they reached out for help. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that happened around the holidays. Mm -hmm. um, they got an eviction notice, as a lot of people know. Um, and they really wanted to let the public know what they were doing um, was a public statement. It was an act of civil disobedience. Um, you know, they had offered to purchase that home, actually, with the land trust. 
but instead of being able to negotiate, they got an eviction notice. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I got to know the moms because I spent time at mom's house talking with them as they were trying to deal with some of the legal issues, um, trying to deal with their day-to-day -day issues because they're working moms. Mm -hmm. Um, they're also volunteers at our parks in West oh, Oakland, wow. volunteers in their kids' school. Okay. Um, they're really amazing, and they know the housing system really well. They've been through all of the services, but they haven't worked for them as mm -hmm. working moms who are housing insecure. Um, but anyway, I, I got to know them through uh, them reaching out, helping them, and I'm just really um, grateful for the work that they have done because they've really made a bold statement to say housing is a human right and I think more people are understanding uh, how important that issue is for um, our entire uh, community and the nation. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think they're, they're incredibly brave and I think, I mean, I want to thank you because it, what they did was really important but also having the support of the council members, I think, you know, tip, tip the edge and, and Got, yeah. got us the success, success there. That's so. right. And I have to say, like, you know, it, what they were doing at first was not popular because people didn't understand it. Um, you know, I got some pushback from some of my constituents um, because it took time for people to understand the moms chose that house strategically. They mm -hmm. didn't um, take that house away from any family or person. They noticed that house was vacant for two years mm -hmm. and they occupied it to make a statement that too many homes are vacant when they could be housing people in a housing crisis, mm -hmm. a crisis. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Well, I'm okay, going to, yeah, plants. let's look at some plants. Let's see. I wonder, can I switch this around here? This is going to be the awkward moment where I'm like technical difficulties. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. So this is our first plant here and this is California buckwheat. Buckwheat. <laughs> I'm just gonna does, cheer. You okay. To say it does, does anybody here know anything about California buckwheat? I don't. Okay, good. All fresh and new. So, this is a native California plant. Uh, so, it is actually uh, edible and medicinal. Medicinal. So, native, like the Ohlone people actually used to use this plant in their medicines. So, you, the plant pieces of the plant that are uh, medicinal are the uh, leaves and the root. So you can make a tea out of the leaves and it's really good for headaches apparently. And you can make a decoction out of the root that is good for diarrhea. Uh, when, the, when, the, when the flowers go brown like this, you can actually take the flower and crumble it up. Let's see and use that and like kind of grind it up and use it as a flower extender. So this is something like if, if we ever have any sort of food scarcity, this is a, a, a good way to kind of um, get at that. All right, so that's California buckwheat. Let's go around. All right, I always like to point out here because we're talking about politics too, actually. Let's, let's flip it around one more time. Because this over here. Can I ask a question about buckwheat? What's sure. a flower extender? Oh, flower, so like, that's, thank you. So a flower extender is when you like if you're making pancakes and you making something oh, with flour. flour. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. It was... <laughs> Two flowers. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's totally important. Like if you're making pancakes or something, you can put the buckwheat in and it extends the flour so that you have more to it. Yeah. Thank, thank you for the clarifying question. <laughs> I wanted to point out this building over here because this is 1200 Lakeshore and this is actually the former home of Huey P. Newton. That's right. Yeah. Of the Black. Okay, heading this way. So we're gonna head under the bridge here. And I think that we all know that this is a, usually a major homeless encampment. That's right. And I think, do you get a lot of calls to get homeless encampments cleared? I'm gonna go this way. Yes, or traffic medians. Um, I definitely get a lot of calls and emails uh, with people concerned about homelessness and also people concerned about, um, you know, the related issues of uh, people who are uh, not in uh, shelters and uh, the trash and um, health and safety issues. So it's a, it's a huge challenge for the city. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm someone who doesn't want you to clear homeless encampments. Just FYI, as a resident here, especially this one, mm -hmm. uh, I feel like this is one of the safest places for folks to be because it's well lit. 
there's a lot of places to go by. Excuse me. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm all right. How are you? Beautiful. Good morning. Thank you. Yeah, so, I mean, when it comes to this, this whole makes me happen. I think that we should allow people to actually be here. This should be one of the spaces. If not here, I mean, I know we have the tough sheds over here. Um, but that really has a limited number of people in them, right? Right. It's um, 40 people. 40 people. Yeah. Right. I, I, so one of the challenges, well, there's a few challenges, obviously. One being that we have an official count of over 4,000 unsheltered residents. Mm -hmm. And there simply aren't enough shelters or transitional housing for people to go to. Mm -hmm. um, the city, even before I entered office, has been closing our parks in particular in this estuary because it's environmentally sensitive. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really important to figure out, um, number one, where can people go that really upgrade, upgrades their conditions and if they are um, in public places, how do we make those places, um, you know, even more safe and more healthy yeah. through providing services like mm -hmm. trash pickup, sanitation, um, you know, I think we could do a lot to make sure that the conditions when people are outdoors um, are more humane and dignified by providing just the basics that we have as house people in terms of trash pickup. Yeah, um, absolutely. A place to wash your hands, a place to go to the bathroom. Yeah, as someone who works in the climate justice movement, like I know that we're going to have an issue with sea level rise. Mm -hmm. uh, and so there's going to be flooding in a lot of different areas and potentially mm -hmm. in the homeless encampments. Mm -hmm. There's some sp spaces where it... So, you know, if we have flooding coming in and people are not dealing with waste in proper ways, then that waste is just going to get flooded into people's homes. Right. Into the neighborhood. So, yeah, it's something that I'm very concerned about mm -hmm. with that. And I'm going to transition to the next plant, <laughs> which is over here. Oh, jeez. <laughs> that was close. Oh my goodness. Okay, so this plant right here is a California sagebrush. So I, yeah, smell this one. <laughs> this oh one you smells. Say sage, I want to smell. So it's, this is actually not a, a, in the sage family. Oh, that so, so, good. so it's actually Art Artemisia. It's actually in the sunflower family, oh. strangely enough. Uh, this is a really interesting plant because, um, I, what I've, and it is supposed to be a natural painkiller on the order of an opioid, the same level of an opioid. Uh, and you can make a liniment out of that, out of it. And w what a liniment is, is you put the herb into, um, uh, alcohol, rubbing alcohol, and you let it simmer in that. And then you put the rubbing alcohol onto whatever pain part, and it's supposed to get rid of the pain within 20 minutes. Um, this is also, it has antibacterial properties to it, and it's also been used as a, a way to treat asthma. So you can take the uh, leaves and kind of put them on your back and it helps to treat asthma. Mm. Also because of the antibacterial properties, it's been used to preserve food. So you can put it over uh, any food and it will keep it from going bad. Yeah. But I use this one, oh actually I, I brought these for you. So I, um, I'm, as part of the tour, we have um, herb bundles. So these are last season, so they're a little dry. But if you wanna see, I make these herb bundles out of the herbs and plants that I find around. So if you would like one of those. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Got two more. I think I got exactly the right amount, which is a very witchy thing to do. <laughs> yeah, so you can burn these in your house. You know, I, I, the, the, the way I really like to use these are in the bathroom. You know, uh -huh. if you smell up the bathroom, you can burn this and it covers up the smell. Mm -hmm. um, they say that, like, uh, you know when you have sage and you're smudging and it's supposed to cleanse the air? Mm -hmm. So they found scientifically that that's true, uh, that the smoke actually kills off microbes in the air. Oh. But it's not just true of sage, it's true of kind of any burned plant material. Mm -hmm. So, um, and sage is really over-harvested, white sage. Mm -hmm. Uh, and a lot of the indigenous people who use it for ceremony don't have access to it because people are harvesting it so much. So uh, I use herb bundles that are made out of plants that you can find locally here mm -hmm. in abundance so that you don't have to worry about over harvesting sage. Oh, I didn't know that about sage. Mm -hmm. you know. So I'm at about 10% battery. 
which means we should stop soon. But I wanted to talk to you about the Equitable Climate Action Great. Plan as the last thing. So this is something that I've been working on. Uh, mm -hmm. As you know, I was one of the neighborhood le leadership cohort That's folks. Right. So I went around and I uh, got people to turn out to meetings so that they could talk about what kind of things uh, they would like to see for the Equitable Climate Action Plan, which if you don't know, is the city's attempt to reduce its greenhouse gas emissions as a whole. So there's some concern, it's gonna be coming up to council on June 2nd, mm -hmm. um, and there's some concern that the community priorities are not involved, like fully integrated into the plan. Okay. So I just wanna kind of ping that for you and pay attention to that because if we like as, as the community if we find that the community priorities have not been in integrated into the plan we are going to probably ask for either to be sent back or mm -hmm. something else like a, a rewrite of the plan okay so i just wanted to ping that for you and i don't know if anybody here has anything to say about the equitable climate action plan we've been working on it yeah i know from the food perspective i also work with the open food policy council um, and we're just concerned that there's not a inclusion of urban farming or gardening activity, mm -hmm. um, especially as a carbon um, absorber, uh, but there is emphasis on carbon uh, in the plan. Um, and then when I spoke to folks who are working on the ECAP, they just said, oh, well, we haven't found um, good enough research, but there is plenty on how urban farming. So that's a concern from the food perspective. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, if we did have, like, I mean, we're still going through the process, but if we did object to what finally goes forward, how should we interact with your office to, to let you know that and to, and to get something different? Sure. So I think um, the act, some of the action steps are already on the city website, right? Mm -hmm. um, I took a quick look at that today, and I would say, like, talk to me and hopefully other council members early. Because the earlier that we hear about concerns, the more time we have to work with you all, um, as well as our staff, to try to address them. Okay. Um, you know, I think for me personally, I um, I have done some work in the environmental justice movement, including um, around toxics many, many years ago, and so I do have an orientation around mm -hmm. the environment, um, environmental justice, and I think. Um, you know, right now, one of the important things that I want the city council to realize is that in addition to the science and the data, there's also the fact that when our communities are more resilient, we're able to, um, you know, just really make sure that we're, um, we're ready for potential climate disasters like sea level rise, for example. Um, so a lot of that is really tied to more about how we, um, prioritize um, making sure that traditionally low-income communities of color have access to um, you know uh, a living wage or secure and affordable housing or transportation access to food and you know the more that our communities are actually in relationship um, I think that is also going to help us become a climate resilient city so there's you know I think probably the work that you've been doing to engage our neighbors has pointed to some of those things that may be like less studied mm -hmm. in terms of um, information and data. Mm -hmm. But I think we know, given like some of our backgrounds coming from immigrant communities or indigenous communities, that a lot of how we steward um, the land and how we care for our, our families is related to our relationships. And so I think that's also a, an important part of how we should be looking at the ECAP. Yeah. yeah, well, so that is kind of what I had to talk about. Well, I, I'm running out of battery, so <laughs> we could talk about the 12th Street project, but that would be a long conversation. Uh, I just wanted to thank you, and I want to see, is there anything else that you feel like we should know about, about your office, or about things that are coming up in front of council, or? Yeah, I'll just say quickly, um, on Tuesday, I am really excited because I've been partnering with our young people to reauthorize Kids First, okay. the Open Fund for Children and Youth, which is something that's been around since, oh boy, for decades. And it's, uh, um, it's about $19 million each year that goes to fund incredible programming to support young people from um, infants all the way to high schools um, and, and college-bound uh, young people. Mm -hmm. 
So um, that's coming up to Council on Tuesday. I'm hoping we'll reauthorize it for another 12 years and continue to invest in our young people. Um, in March, I'll be bringing forward the Moms for Housing Tenant Opportunity to Purchase Act. Yes. And then every day, the other part of my job, in addition to the policy making, is connecting with constituents. So definitely feel free to call or email. Um, you can find my contact information and my staff's contact information on our website. And then I do office hours at least once a month, um, second Tuesdays at the Grand Lake Farmers Market, and you can sign up to make appointments. Um, and I'm out in the community if there are mountain we try to put different things I'm participating in um, <laughs> on my social media so uh -huh. that you can see where I'll be and, and can connect with me yeah. out in the community. Your social well. media is really great, by the way. <laughs> Tiffany, where's Tiffany? Hey. Tiffany, Tiffany really helps me. Great out. job on the communications. So thank you guys all for, for joining us today. If you want to join uh, the Witches Walking Tour of Oakland, the first one of the year is going to be March 1st from four to six o'clock here at the Oakland Amphitheater. So pay attention to the page, come out and join us. It's really fun. Uh, it's a donate donation base. You can learn all about the plants around the lake and then you get a discount at the Raven's Wing at the end of the walk. So uh, come out then and be paying attention to the page. We're gonna be talking politics and plants and with a lot of different people. So see you soon.